Hey, good morning, fellow thrill seekers. It's just Jeremiah, and I am here in Bombay Beach. I'm on my way back to Slab City. It's almost been two weeks since I've been gone. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it has. Uh, I'm so ready to get back and pull off some of the plants that I had uh, been working on. You know, I've already set up a, three Craigslist ads, one in San Diego, one in Los Angeles, one in Palm Springs. And what I'm asking for is people that are willing to, one, drive down with a truck like every other week. Two, uh, someone else to like gather supplies in a staging area. Three, someone to work like the social media angle where they can like try to gather like, you know, stuff people are throwing away, medical supplies, food, etc. And yeah, I've already got a people, few people calling back that are interested in helping. So like honestly, between those three, three places, it won't be hard at all to get lots of help from, from Slap City. Uh, when I got to Bombay Beach, I'm back in that little art district place. It's super creepy. Uh, it's cooler at night. There's the sun. But, oh yeah, look. This is where I slept. One thing I learned is that when you're in these types of places, one second, always check the ground. Check this out. What is it? This? Is that, is that, oh my gosh, why did I not eat this like eighth and a half of mushrooms last night when I was here alone? Oh my gosh. I've got the water, I've got, it's a, it's a lot of fucking mushroom shake. I lost so much on the road, I'm sorry. Thank you, whoever this is, but mine, yoink, ground score. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just recap the past couple of days. I got back to Palm Springs from Minnesota. Uh, I wanted weed, so I went to go with my last $10 and buy a gram of weed. Crossing the street, some guy said, hey, you want to come work? Help me put in a sink? I said, yeah, bro. So he drove me over to go get the weed quick because I had to get high. And it turned out he didn't need my help. Uh, it was still kind of cool. Someone offered me to jump in their car. And at the one point, I like put all my stuff in his car and I ran into the dispensary Five minutes after meeting, and he could have just drove off with all my stuff. I know I shouldn't be too trusting, but every now and then you gotta you gotta show some trust. Those who lack trust are generally those who don't trust, and or those who lack trust are generally those who don't deserve trust. But yeah, so that night I went and I just like passed out hard at that spot where the tiny scorpion chased me about a month and a half ago, two months ago, and then uh, the next day I woke up. And I made a sign. I was going to go do some panhandling. And I jumped on the bus. Some guy gave me some weed. You, talk, you saw me talking about that. Uh, then I ended up going to another bus stop. And I had this uh, transsexual homeless person come and sit with me. And they were nice. But they just were kind of like trying to hang out. And I wasn't. And they weren't really answering questions clearly. And... You know, like I was playing the part of a two-way conversation, but it wasn't really going anywhere. And so I gave them the rest of my, you know, like I, when I get weed for free, I give it out on the road. You know, just a little bit. If I see someone who's on the streets, hey, here's the bud. Have a great day. So I gave them some bud. And then I went, uh, I did some panhandling. Oh, and then I like went to Walmart to get some water because I was out of water. I set my sign, which I took an hour on, really nice sign. I won't lie, I just want weed. And I set it behind like... The propane machine. I went in for two minutes, came back out. It was gone. I looked everywhere. Not a homeless person would steal it because it has my PayPal. So they, they threw it away and denied it at Walmart. And I said, I'm sorry, that, but that's that item was my possession. Would you throw my bike away? I'm sorry you don't agree with the sign. I'm sorry that it looks like something that's not valuable to you, but you just took someone's possession and threw it away. I was pissed. So then I, let's see, we're talking two days ago. So then I went over to the other Walmart and I was just drained. It was so hot. I didn't feel like panhandling. Uh, oh yeah. And so then eventually I went to go set up camp back behind like a, a gas station. And I'm there laying down and some lady just starts yelling stuff. And I'm like, lady, I can't hear you. And she's just yelling stuff. I'm like, lady. She's like, what did... And I'm like, lady, I'm homeless. It's not illegal to be homeless. Like, what? What? 
blah, blah. So she goes over, and all of a sudden, two guys come running up. Turns out that I had set up camp in this little fenced-in area that was a, a, a meth lab. And so I was like 50 yards away from this meth lab where these guys came over. And the lady had told them that I said to her to suck my dick, which I'm sorry, but if you know me, I wouldn't say that to a stranger. I wouldn't say that to people. You know, I get angry, but yeah. That don't, <laughs> so I explained to them, I just came to see my mom. Came back from seeing my mom. I respect women, this and that, the other. I talked them down. But to be honest, I was this close from putting it on Facebook Live in case they did some shit. And so they kept coming back and asking questions. And I'm like, you want me to just go? And he's like, you know, I'm not saying you have to go, but if you want to be here, you're probably going to be a part of this. And I was like, uh, I'll see ya. Now, the meth lab is conjecture, but yeah, it was totally a Breaking Bad meth lab. Like, dudes came at me. Uh, I wasn't scared because I don't believe, I feel, I feel like fear is something that they would have tuned in on, you know? So I just stood my ground, was confident, assertive, went the, got the heck out of there. Uh, yeah, so then I went and... Did some more panhandling the next day. And I put a time lapse up of that. Eventually a police officer came by, told me to go. Now the thing is, technically, uh, panhandling is protected by my First Amendment right to freedom of speech. Like if you can fly a sign that says, hey, buy for my business, or hey, like, you should believe in my God, then I can fly a sign asking for help. And the thing is, the way the law works, honestly, is uh, they can tell you where you can't do it, but the list can't be longer than where you can. You know, if they're like, well, you can't do it in this town, then you can actually stand there, give them shit, catch a citation, and sue the, ha sue the heck out of them. And honestly, from watching enough videos of the way cops abuse power, like, I think I might actually do that step. Because in Desert Springs, they, like, ID'd me once. Now, that's, I'm not committing a crime and I'm being ID'd. You're treating me like a criminal. You're discriminating against me because I have a backpack and I'm homeless. Why would we take our most vulnerable people and discriminate against them? Now, I realize that a lot of the homeless people I meet on the road, I'm sorry, they're addicted to meth. I get offered meth eight times a day when I'm panhandling, you know. Uh, people will stop in their cars and offer it. Everyone's coming up, and they're all trying to befriend me. And as soon as they find out I don't like meth, they're like, oh, man, more power. And they just leave. It's got to be a struggle for anyone who has dependency issues. I'm luckily I got my dependency issues out of the way, like, well over a decade ago, and it was more downers, you know, pharmaceuticals, 16 years ago plus. If you, if I was struggling with dependency issues, I would really, I could see why the people get stuck on the road and why people on the road have a bad reputation. But at the same time, I mean, never had any work in my teeth. I'm sorry, I'm not a meth head. It's pretty fucking obvious to me. See the smile? Like, when do you see meth heads with a big smile? Except probably right before they hit the meth. Now, the thing is, I'm talking bad, and I'm not trying to say bad stuff about them, because they th they're, they're people, you know? People, I shouldn't call them meth heads. That's derogatory. Uh, I've got plenty of things that I'm not perfect about. But, yeah, so then the cop kicked me out. I just did it. I'm going to make a video about it then. I'm just going to... Yeah, what it is is that, like, yeah, they can't narrowly define where you would choose to express your freedom of speech. Uh, all I have to say to them is, uh, where where can't I panhandle? They'll be like, well, you can only do it here. And I'm going to be like, well, what you're doing is infringing on my first amendment freedom of speech. And I'm going to have to have, I'm going to ask you to tell the camera why you think that's acceptable for your town's ordinances to supersede my first amendment constitutional rights. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to be like, the long, the short of it is someone called in because they don't like this. And your operators aren't trained to tell them, hey, that man's practicing his First Amendment freedom of speech. You're asking for a lawsuit, and you're about to get me a lot of hits on YouTube. I have nothing other than weed on me. Feel free to search me, run my name, but you're going to have to get a warrant. So how about this? I'm going to panhandle, and you're going to get out of my face. I'm going to do it. No, you're going to love it. I really am, because I'm getting sick of this. Like, I don't want to be, be abused by the cops just because I don't live the lifestyle that TV tells us to. Get the fuck out of here with that. So enough of the negative stuff. All right, so then I just like wandered around, got my supplies. I uh, yeah, I met someone else riding a bike. Everyone just comes up and asks me if I want to do meth, and I don't. I smoke weed. Uh, I hardly even drink. 
Well, who else did I make it? Just a bunch of crazy people on the road. So eventually I got all my stuff together. I'm headed back down to Slab City. I hitched south from Thousand Palms. And I got a ride from some people that didn't speak much English. And they were really nice. They dropped me off at Coachella. And right there was a girl panhandling on the side of the road. And she offered me a ride to Slab City, which she thought I said seven miles away, 70 miles away. So it took me all this whole process. She had to go run up to some homeless camp and get her friend and this and that. And it turned out she only thought that uh, I said seven miles. So she's like, I'm telling my weird stories. And she starts getting scared. She's like, how far are you taking us? And I was like, ah, to Slab City. And she found out how far it was. So I had her drop me off here in Bombay Beach. That's where I found the mushrooms. I slept for the night. About to get up. I need to get, like, a bike because... I had brought my bike up to Palm Springs, but the bike sucks. It's a Walmart bike. And like for real, about two in a row, their back tire went flat immediately. They basically put it together so it's made to fall apart because like, I think they have like a golden retriever putting the bikes together at Walmart or something. They must because there can't be anyone that fucking stupid who works with bikes. But yeah, so... I couldn't take the bike back because my friend Carrie had the receipt, so she's going to help me return it. And I couldn't, like, hitchhike with a bike. No one's going to pick me up with a bike. So I got to stretch. I got 19 miles to hitchhike to Slab City. And four miles walk from Nyland, uh, I'm not feeling that walk anymore. I feel like that's why I just sit around all day and do nothing and just sit in the handlebar covered in flies, just waiting for it to cool off. I need a bike. I need to get away from the flies. I need to stay active. So I'm going to, of course... Walmart. Maybe I'll check Craigslist, but I'm headed down to Brawley, 25 miles south of Slab City, where I'm going to go potentially panhandle a little more. I just want more weed. I got a good sign, too. So I'm going to panhandle a little bit more, and then I'm going to uh, buy supplies. Yeah, like, I wouldn't mind getting, like, a... What's that called? Like a 10 by 10 to go over my tent. Uh, I can't think of the name. Sorry, it's early. But I need something to go over with space between what's blocking the sun and my tent. Because it gets so hot in my tent. And I would love to just be able to relax in there and not have to only sit in the handlebar when it's hot. So I need that. I need to get some Nerf guns so I can come back and act like I'm cool. I need to uh, buy some blunts for sure. Uh, and I need a bicycle. Some upcoming plans. I plan to uh, I plan to hitchhike into Mexico without a passport. That'll make a good video. Uh, I plan to head over towards the Grand Canyon to visit Supai, the United States' most isolated town. Uh, it's in the Grand Canyon. It's a tribe of natives, 150 people. It's the United States' only postal a post office that uses a, mail, a mule train for the mail. I'm going to go back over to San Diego. My buddy Dan Fletcher uh, was going to offer me a water filter and then a camera to borrow until I get my own new camera up. I'd love to get photos of these. And like, honestly, it's going to be to the point where I'm painting and doing photos and, and selling them on my website and linking them through my YouTube. Like, I don't plan for YouTube uh, ads or especially like panhandling or even like the contributions for my awesome subscribers like I don't plan on those being my main source of income I plan on the photography that I gather on the way being sold on my website and then using this platform to channel people that way to buy my stuff like I, that will be my main source of income so you know like I don't plan on just living off of contributions and charity I, I, it's just what's getting me by till I get up to that monetization point which I'm halfway there too and thanks to you and uh that will get it so that I can you know, have a little more money to, again, buy more things and make this more fancy pants, time lapses, underwater stuff, etc., drone footage. So that catches me up to here. Uh, I'm out of blunt. I, I lost a pack yesterday, and I'm, like, itching to smoke. So I'm kind of hoping to, like, get to my destination quick. Although, like, it's a back desert road. Like, it could be hours till I get a ride. I really hope not. Luckily, I look funny and awesome with my sign that says, I won't lie, I just want weed attached to the back of my backpack. I got a new setup, so it's just 
on the back and it just draws attention. It makes me look like a person. You make people laugh, they realize you're a person. I'm not looking forward to like just sitting in the handlebar with flies and heat. I kind of want to get one of those little chairs where you got your own little fenced in chair thing and it's like mesh and you just sit in there to prevent bugs because this flies drive me crazy and it's too hot to wear long clothes and they just, I feel like they like me better. I really hope this contributions towards the slab start coming in. Uh, again, I want to help. Uh, one of my plans is while I'm there, I think one of my goals is to get it so that I've got, I want to do a breakfast. I want to do my own little mini camp where every morning you come by and you get pancakes, as many as you want. I'll just get the complete pancake mix, just water and powder. And then I just need to gather wood, like, you know, and get one of those griddles. So I just need a griddle, pancake mix, and syrup, maybe some butter. Get a bunch of them. And I want to make breakfast for everyone. I feel like that would be awesome, uh, my contribution. That's what I used to do at Mount Shasta last year when I was there. And uh, they're so cheap, and everyone loves pancakes. You could add you know, some chocolate and some bananas or some apples and cinnamon or some blueberries. You can do whatever and make it kind of fun. Uh, some goals that I have looking forward. It's getting to be about that time where I'm going to roll, so why not take you out and show you Bombay Beach again? You might have seen it before, but uh, let's check it out in the, in the morning. Let's go. So this is the creepy room. Someone came by and tried to sleep in it, and I said, no vacancy. <laughs> Maybe they thought I was mean and weird, but whatever. I heard a chicken earlier. There's a pigeon now, but... Cool. Clean out their space. Make sure Ollie has book. Make sure Ohio has right ceramics. Text people back. Go to Home Depot. Little brushes, six. Rake, acrylic. Admit when you're wrong. It's funny. All right, so... Yeah, so the past few days have been nice. I'm, I'm a little bored. I'm excited to get to somewhere new. Uh, Slab City isn't exactly new. So, you know, I'm going to go and work on what I'm building up there. But I'm also going to start doing, like, weekly trips out and about. Uh, oh, cool. This is nice. Creep. Oh, creepy. Look at that. You know, this stuff doesn't scare me. Like, last night, like, the wind was banging a bunch of stuff, and, like, you'd be standing over somewhere, and a door would open and close quick, and it's just the wind. I mean, it's kind of creepy. Like, I get a very strong, like, vampire vibe here. Like, it really reminds me of, like, The Lost Boys, you know. But uh, I'm still here. I don't have any holes in my neck, I think. I love this here. This is sweet. What does he live in? Was it a shit? Oh, I forget. You had me at your unsettling dust, whispered bitter, sweet nothings, charred, carved, puncturing, shattered, damask, threads worn thin and sultry soil by sweet pungent Noxious blooms, gushing whiff of candied sulfur, myrrh, op up nox, the dust scraped from gold leaf, curling off idols and stiletto heels, sunk into the quickest of sands. It's pretty cool. 
This is my favorite up here. Nah. Let's see. Pretty close to my favorite. Would you sleep here by yourself at night? It's not even a piano, it's just boxes. How cool is that? Shag carpet. Have you ever done any or urban exploring? Uh, when I was a kid, there's a spot called Hall Mansion back in Pennsylvania. And it's got a whole backstory. It's pretty cool. Uh, basically, it's like a 16 floor tower that was attached to a big mansion with a 27 car garage. But uh, so shit happened. The place burnt down. It's abandoned. And it's super creepy and awesome. Filled with like spray paint and this and that. Oh, yeah. This kind of reminds me of that. I don't know you could get in that front room. Maybe the only way is to crawl in the window. This is about it. I'm not going to make you watch too much longer. Uh, let me know if you think that this video could have gone longer. I would have walked around and shown you all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's a drive-in theater art thing oh this is cool wow tell me everything Well, that's me. Uh, I'm eager to go get lunch, to be honest. Uh, get back to Slap City. Go find some cool people that want to go collaborate. Uh, any of you strangers, meet new friends. You know it. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. It means a lot. You know, I know sometimes it's not super interesting. But uh, you truck on through and you're still here. Thanks a lot. I care about you, and I hope you're having a great day. Go out and explore some crazy stuff. You know, if you just avoid buying that one Gatorade each day, one Gatorade each day, uh, you can have a thousand bucks at the end of the year. That's like a cruise. That's like two cruises. If you can just cut some expenses. I'm, I'm preaching now. I'll shut up. But, uh, yeah, less is more. I mean, what do you really need when you got a beautiful little home like this. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.